the headlines of this hour on VTV News. Prime Minister Fat Ming Ching attends a special summit commemorating 50 years of ASEAN Australia relations. Later on, Vietnam establishes epidemic safe zone to facilitate exports to China. In our world news, Yemen's Houthis claim attacks on two U.S. warships in the Red Sea. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good afternoon. It is currently 3 p.m. local time, and you're tuning in to 30 minutes of VTV News. I'm Dylan Lee with the latest updates. Now, on the top, top news of this hour, the 10th ceremony for the People's Artists and Meritorious Artists Awards was held on Wednesday morning, with 389 artists receiving the titles. State President Vo Van Thuong, along with several other state and party leaders, attended the ceremony and congratulated the artists. Of these, 125 artists received the People's Artist Title, and 264 were awarded the Meritorious Artist Title. All the honored artists have made significant contributions to art and culture and are widely appreciated by the public. State President Vo Van Thuong expressed his appreciation for artists from various dis disciplines who have enriched people's lives and guided them towards good values. He also emphasized the need to respect artists' creativity and freedom in promoting a healthy democratic life and modernizing traditional arts. On Wednesday morning in Melbourne, Prime Minister Fat Ming Ching attended the special summit commemorating 50 years of ASEAN-Australia relations. At the plenary session, he praised the close, long-standing relationship between ASEAN and Australia. He proposed three areas for breakthroughs and enhancements to strengthen cooperation. The three suggested breakthroughs include doubling two-way trade turnover in the next decade through cooperation in economics, trade and investment, cooperation in human resources training, and cooperation in science, technology, and innovation. For enhancements, he suggested increasing political trust, strengthening sub-regional cooperation, and promoting people-to-people -people exchanges. This will lay the foundation for durable and robust relations between the two sides, since upgrading their relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership in 2021. ASEAN and Australia saw a trade turnover of over 101 billion US dollars in 2022, nearly 20% more than in 2021. A groundbreaking ceremony was held in Ginzang province on Wednesday morning for the construction of the Ho Chi Minh Road, sp uh, specifically the Rexai, Bin Yat and Go Guao Vinh Thuan section. The project spans nearly 52 kilometers, with a total investment exceeding 157.8 million US dollars. It is anticipated that it will be completed within two years. Upon completion, the road will connect the Go Guao, Hong Zhen, and Vinh Thuan districts, eliminating the need for three ferries. The project is also expected to boost socio-economic development and ensure national defense and regional security. The Vietnam Transport Development and Strategy Institute forecasts that the demand for intramodal rail transport in Vietnam could reach 8 to 9 million tons per year within six years. As a result, the railway industry has formulated a plan to boost its international transport capacity by rail. Specifically, this plan includes renovating rail station infrastructure to meet the needs of cross-country freight transport. Recently, Gaosa Station in Haizong Province has gone beyond its primary function of facilitating trains on the Hanoi Haiphong route. Using available resources, the railway industry has commenced urgent renovations of stations and cargo yards to enhance goods transportation. 
The current progress is highly promising in just over a month of work and laid the foundation for the warehouse, along with the implementing temporary measures. We are optimistic that by April 15, we will finalize the temporary steps, enabling us to commence cargo ship operations by April 30th. Once the initial stage is finished, phase one of the Gaosa station renovation and upgrade project will begin. Upon its completion, the yard area will have an expanded capacity of 10,000 square meters, meeting international freight operation standards. The proposed expansion and upgrade of the Gaosa station serve as the gateway, effectively shortening the distance between Haizhou's border and its seaports. This development is beneficial to the socio-economic development of the province, fostering the production and consumption of goods within Haizhou while encouraging collaboration with businesses and investors. Haizhou province strongly supports the project to renovate and upgrade the station area due to its numerous benefits. The locality is currently considering a plan to allocate additional land for expanding the station and goods yard as proposed. As a result, the railway network will house three inland stations capable of conducting export customs procedures. Cap station in Bắc Giang, Song Thần station in Bình Dương and Gao Sa station in Haizhou. This development is not only beneficial for businesses dealing in the import and export of goods, but also aids the railway industry in reaching its international freight transport target of 4 to 5 million tons per year, which is 4 to 5 times higher than the current capacity. Like Vietnam's current livestock product export markets, which include Japan, South Korea, the EU and Middle Eastern countries, China also requires that exported products originate from disease-free facilities or zones. Accordingly, a food and mouth disease-free zone for pigs is being established under a memorandum of understanding between Vietnam and China, thanks to the joint efforts of both nations. In late 2023, the Vietnamese Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and China's General Administration of Customs signed a Memorandum of Understanding. This agreement aims to establish an epidemic-free zone between the two nations, ensuring smooth transportation of animal products. The initiative includes the creation of a mandatory vaccination buffer zone that spans at least 3 kilometers. The request from the Chinese authorities is simple and transparent, a vaccination buffer zone. We can fulfill their request and ensure that the vaccine used meets the requirements of the Chinese authorities. The typical animal quarantine process at the border gate takes around two days. However, in epidemic-free zones, regional veterinary departments can perform the quarantine and issue certificates directly at the site. This procedure allows for more convenient and quicker customs clearance of goods at the border gate. When departing from the epidemic-free facilities to the border gate, they will be given priority. This contributes to reducing the time and effort spent by exporting enterprises. In Vietnam, a large portion of livestock farming is still small-scale. Yet, to establish an epidemic-free zone, local management must link these facilities into a unified network that follows standardized regulations. We can create epidemic-free zones starting from small areas, then expand their scales to build larger areas that suit the budget, management capacity, and control of all livestock households in this buffer zone. This is the most suitable approach for Vietnam. The Department of Animal Health is currently negotiating with Chinese authorities to re-evaluate the contents and import prerequisites specified in the existing Memoranda of Understanding. This process will guide Vietnamese localities in setting up disease-free zones in the near future. Interest in Vietnamese livestock products such as meat, eggs, milk and bird's nest is on the rise, with their value steadily increasing across various markets. In the first two months of 2024, livestock product exports surged to 78 million US dollars, marking a 15% increase from the same period the previous year. Forecasts suggest a significant boost in the industry's exports in the years to come, especially as China expresses willingness to review documents for Vietnam to export poultry meat. China's domestic demand requires approximately 25 million pigs and 800,000 tons of chicken imports annually. 
The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development predicts that if Vietnam can secure a poultry meat export protocol with China and potentially negotiate for pork in the future, the annual export turnover of livestock products could reach into the billions. This presents a promising outlook for the industry. The Japanese Food and Beverage Exhibition Food Dex Japan 2024 on Tuesday opened with the participation of businesses from 60 countries and territories with over 3,140 booths. Attending the exhibition, the Businesses Products Vietnam continues to attract the attention of visitors. Nearly 30 Vietnamese businesses brought to the FoodEx Japan 2024 exhibition hundreds of products such as spices, vegetables, fruits, rice, and milk. Customers at the event are very impressive with those products. At FoodEx Japan 2024, we launched a new spice set. To introduce this set, we have researched and developed products that suit Japanese tastes and their strict standards. According to Japanese distributors, Vietnamese products are increasingly improving in both design and quality. It shows a great opportunity for Vietnamese goods to conquer the Japanese market as well as other developed markets. Currently, Vietnamese restaurants in Japan are very popular. Many customers respond that Vietnamese food and beverage products are very delicious. Thus, we will also have a plan to expand the introduction of Vietnam's products are in chain. FoodEx Japan 2024 exhibition is a prestigious exhibition on food and beverages in the world. This is an opportunity for Vietnamese businesses to identify and promote their brands, connect with other global businesses to expand the market. Before we move on, let's have a look at the exchange rate between the Vietnam Dong and some world currencies in today's market. Coming up next on VTV News, Vietnam emerges as the second largest exporter of smartphones. And community and government collaborate to conserve mangrove forests. Now moving on to other important updates, Vietnam has risen as the world's second largest smartphone exporter, outpacing South Korea in this sector. It has consistently attracted numerous foreign manufacturers and steadily increased its global export market share. According to the General Department of Customs, Vietnam's exports of phones and components soared to over 5.5 billion US dollars in January, marking a significant increase of more than 50.4% compared to December 2023 and a rise of 11.4% from the same period the previous year. Notably, the United States and China have become the main destinations for Vietnamese phones and components. Furthermore, Vietnam has attracted leading industry players, with companies like Apple establishing factories across the country. Currently, 25 suppliers from this group have operations in Vietnam. In February, Vietnam encountered and managed 862 cyber attacks that disrupted its information system, according to the Ministry of Information and Communications. This number is nearly half of what it was during the same period last year. However, over 432,000 computer addresses or IPs were infected with viruses, marking a 13% increase from February of the previous year. Additionally, the Department of Information Security identified illegal advertisements on 43 portals of ministries, branches, provinces and cities and issued warnings to the relevant units to address the issue promptly. 
out of the 14.7 million hectares of forest land and land with forests. Approximately 3.4 million hectares lack clear ownership and are currently under temporary management by local people's committees. With the guidance of the Land Law 2024 and government directives, these areas will undergo continuous review and allocation, prioritizing distribution to individuals to bolster livelihoods and foster stability in communities. Vietnam currently boasts 7.2 million hectares of forest owned by various parties. However, a disconnect exists between land and forest allocation, as well as forestry land lease arrangements. According to the Vietnam Forest Owners Association, over the past three years, there has been significant fluctuation in the management of forest areas, currently estimated at 3.4 million hectares. The state doesn't assign management of 3.4 million hectares but claims it's managed at the commune level. Yet, individuals cultivate without maps or monitoring. This lack of oversight leads to disputes, misuse, and land degradation. The Land Law 2024 is poised to address key challenges in the forestry industry. Alongside expanding the scope for transferring forest land use rights by up to 15 times the limit for forest land allocation, the law introduces new provisions for leasing production forests and ecotourism. Furthermore, it allows for the construction of infrastructure to bolster production activities. These changes pave the way for adjustments to forestry laws, focusing on consolidating land and forest data to ensure ownership rights for individuals allocated land and forests. Revisions to forestry laws are crucial for aligning with land and forest allocation, ensuring security in production. The government has assigned the forestry sector to conduct a comprehensive forest census in 2024 with forest owners. The forestry law will undergo nine key adjustments effective from April 2024, to align with land law, which takes effect in 2025. Looking ahead to 2024, the forestry sector is gearing up for a collaborative effort with various agencies and local authorities to conduct a sweeping forest inventory and audit. This is essential for successfully implementing Vietnam's forestry strategy, particularly as the country aims for net zero emissions by 2050 and complies with the EU's zero deforestation regulations. The dry seasons in the Central Highlands present optimal conditions for wildfires as deciduous trees shed their leaves and dry vegetation becomes abundant. During this period, even a small spark can rapidly ignite a large-scale blaze within minutes. Given these risks, localities in Central Highlands have implemented stringent measures for forest fire prevention and control. Here is our report from Daklak Province. EN has actively coordinated with rangers to protect the local forest. As a village head, he has increased community awareness about forest fire prevention and encouraged support for rangers during the dry season. In the rainy season, forests provide a supplementary source of food for villagers. However, forests are at high risk of fire during the dry season, so we have removed fallen leaves to prevent the spread of forest fires. Recently, residents of Cha village have collaborated with rangers to clear the forest floor of fresh shrubs and fallen trees. This effort reduces the amount of fuel available for fires. More than half of this forest's total area is managed and protected by locals. Local authorities have equipped these individuals with the knowledge and skills to combat forest fires. We gave instructions to local people on how to utilize zoned areas for shifting cultivation. Locals are required to inform local authorities of their activities before they start cultivating a plot of land in forests. We have established a forest fire prevention team that will be on duty round the clock during the peak of the dry season. Additionally, we have collaborated with local residents in buffer zones to enhance joy efforts in forest fire prevention. The majority of residents in areas with high risk of forest fires have signed an agreement with local authorities and strictly adhere to the government's law on forest protection and wildfire prevention. Thanks to these collective efforts, no forest fires have been reported in Douglas province since the start of this year. 
salt water with a salinity ranging from 2.6 to nearly 5 parts per thousand has infiltrated the Tien River and Ham Lung River, deeply affecting the two major cities of Mi Tho and Bên Che. Due to this high salinity, water plants in these provinces have been forced to source raw water from upstream of the Tien River to supply over 100,000 households in the region. Additionally, a company in Benche has had to arrange for water to be transported by barge from other areas. It's predicted that saline intrusion in the Mekong Delta may worsen, with five to six more waves of penetration expected. Salinity levels in the rivers are likely to increase from the 7th to the 12th of March, with two peak periods projected to occur in the middle of the second week of March and the second week of April. Starting March the 7th, the Mekong Delta will experience severe salt water intrusion during high tides. Forecasts indicate that from March 7th to the 13th, a saline concentration of 4, th uh, four gams per liter could reach 50 to 60 kilometers inland from the estuaries of the Vam Ko Dong and Vam Ko Tay rivers. It could also penetrate 40 to 50 kilometers from the Ge Tiêu, Ge Đại, Ham Luong, Ko Chien and Ho rivers and about 37 to 45 kilometers from the Gai Lun River. This year's saltwater intrusion is expected to be more intense than the yearly average, so it is advised that fresh water to be stored during low tide to meet the needs of both the population and agriculture. In recent years, the mangrove forests along Vietnam's coast have significantly expanded. The key to conserving and restoring these mangroves is the involvement of local communities. Guangning Province, which has the largest area of mangrove forests in the northern region, has added over 700 hectares of new mangrove forests. This increase brings the total area of mangrove forests in the province to more than 19,000 hectares. When the tide receded, Ving took a wreck to search for snails and crabs. Over the past 12 years, her family and others have adapted by sustainably catching seafood in mangrove forests. These local mangrove forests have enabled residents to sustain their livelihoods and increase their income. I catch marine animals, except for the young or smaller ones, as we allow them to continue to grow and reproduce. Twelve years ago, this area was used for aquaculture through ponds and lagoons. However, local authorities have since implemented a plan to restore and develop mangrove forests here. We raised local awareness about mangrove forest protection and established management teams in each village. Each person is encouraged to join hands in protecting mangrove forests. In many locations, the government plans mangrove forests or assigns their protection to forest management boards. However, in Guangning province, the responsibility for protecting and expanding mangrove forests is given to the local people. The protection and expansion of mangrove forests are expected to contribute to maintaining the livelihoods of local people. The restoration, protection and development of mangrove forests in Guangning province have been made possible through joint efforts by both authorities and local people. As a result, farmers can maintain their livelihoods and also adapt to climate change. Coming up next in our world news. Yemen's Houthis claim attacks on two U.S. warships in the Red Sea. And no breakthrough achieved in Gaza ceasefire negotiations. Now moving on to our world news, on Tuesday night, Yemen's Houthis claimed to have launched several missile and drone attacks against two U.S. Navy warships in the Red Sea. The Houthi military spokesperson announced this operation on the Houthi-run satellite TV channel Al Mashura, stating that it was carried out using a number of naval missiles and drones. The U.S. Navy has not yet commented on these attacks. Before the Houthis' announcement, the U.S.-British military coalition conducted five airstrikes on Hodeida, a port city in Yemen. According to local residents on social media, these airstrikes targeted Houthi mobile missile launchers in the area. 
three days of negotiation with Hamas for a ceasefire in Gaza have not resulted in a breakthrough, with less than a week left before the start of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, the informal deadline for an agreement. Hamas stated that it has responded to the proposals presented by Egyptian and Qatari mediators during the two-day discussions in Cairo, Egypt. Israel, however, did not send a delegation to participate in the negotiation and has not publicly commented on the Cairo talks yet. For weeks, the United States, Qatar and Egypt have been working to secure an agreement in which Hamas would release up to 40 hostages in exchange for a six-week ceasefire and the delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza. The deal is anticipated to be finalized before the start of Ramadan, which begins on March the 10th. El Nino typically occurs every two to seven years. It is a naturally occurring phenomenon linked to the disrupted wind patterns that resulted in warmer ocean surface temperatures in the eastern and central Pacific. Although the El Nino weather pattern has begun to weaken, it will continue to feel above average temperatures across the globe, the World Meteorological Organization warned on Tuesday. Lasting approximately 9 to 12 months, El Nino often triggers extreme weather events such as wildfires, tropical cyclones, and prolonged droughts. According to the spokesperson for the World Meteorological Organization, El Nino peaked in December and would go down as one of the five strongest in history. What we've seen with this El Nino perhaps more than any other event in the past is that it's fueled the heat trapped by greenhouse gases um, due to, as we all know, from human activities. El Nino is a naturally occurring event, um, but everything now, all El Nino events, all La Nina events, take place in the context of a climate which has been radically changed by, by human activities. The World Meteorological Organization said there was about a 60% chance of El Nino persisting from March to May and a 80% chance of neutral conditions, neither El Nino or La Nina, in April to June. Ocean surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific clearly reflect El Nino, but sea surface temperatures in other parts of the globe have been persistently and unusually high for the past 10 months and the January 2024 sea surface temperature was by far the highest on record for a January. There is a chance of La Nina, a weather pattern characterized by unusually cold temperatures in the Pacific Ocean developing later in the year, but the odds remain uncertain. And now let's have a look at the weather forecast for Vietnam and other locations in the world. And that is all that we have for this hour on VTV News. To rewatch our program, you can visit our website or YouTube channel or download a mobile app, VTV Go, for more. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.